some things are timeless. But the old way of managing leads and group businesses at your hotel is not. With the evolution of technology comes a revolution that'll benefit you. Triple Seat's sales and catering platform for hotels is designed to deliver a seamless, efficient, user-friendly experience for sales teams and guests that modernizes the sales process and replaces outdated legacy systems. So step into the new age and do more in less time. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the International Luxury Hotel Association's webinar, 2023, The Future of Events and Group Travel. Today's webinar is sponsored by Triple C, sales and catering software for hotels. My name is Whitney Spratt. I am the Senior Director of Hotels at Triple C and will be moderating today. I'm joined by three panelists who are equally as passionate about this topic as I am. So before we go ahead and get our conversation started, I'm going to give them each a chance to introduce themselves. First up, we have Lisa Bush, Director of Sales and Marketing at Thompson Nashville. Lisa? Hi. Uh, yes, Lisa Bush, uh, Thompson Nashville, um, Music City, USA. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for being here, Lisa. We also have Joel Costa, Director of Sales and Marketing at One Hotel San Francisco. Yes, good morning. Great to be here. Um, been a part of the industry since I can't remember. I was in college, so um, great to be here. Very passionate about the topic. Awesome. Thanks, Joel. And we also have Priya Rajamani, VP of Implementation and Support at Stay in Touch. Good morning, everyone. Really, really excited to be on this panel today. And uh, yes, I look after implementations and support globally for Stay in Touch, a, a PMS platform. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the three of you joining me today to have this conversation. Um, there's definitely been a lot of evolution in our industry over the last several years. So excited to kind of talk through some of those elements today. Um, so to start, let's talk about how events and group travel have evolved over the last several years and what you all see trending for 2023. And Lisa, I was hoping maybe you could get us started on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, events have constantly been evolving, um, and we've noticed a trend with groups hosting fewer guests in larger spaces, um, and they're also adding a remote access such as Zoom or conference call um, phone in their meeting room. Um, but with that being said, they're also adding on uh, personal time. So their pre and post trip, they will add that to get, get the most out of their trip. Sure, yeah, kind of making a, a little work vacation out of it. Exactly. Absolutely. Is that something that you're seeing as well, Joel? Yeah, definitely. Um, not just with the group attendees, but also with business travel. Um, unfortunately, I think the term is called bleisure. So they, <laughs> they blend in a little bit of extra time. Uh, it's nice to see. So Friday nights, um, I think, are starting to tick up a little bit more um, as we get into this new year. Uh, it's good to see. Yeah, that's great. And, and um, Lisa, you mentioned sort of that hybrid element to events that, you know, we all sort of had to quickly adapt to um, over COVID. So, you know, what are some ways that you all are implementing those hybrid elements into your events? Um, well, speaking of, you know, how we've kind of, our staffing has changed in particular, um, you know, creative challenges is COVID taught us that uh, we're capable of so much more. So what we found is the team is willing to go above and beyond and they're capable of just providing the, the best service because they we've done a lot of cross training and, and we do more become a better rounded team because we are able to do a lot of different functions. And I know that's not always um, an option for a lot of hotels around the country, but it has really benefited this hotel. Um, being able to provide different services um, by being cross-trained in different areas. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think, um, you know, sort of wearing several hats has always been a standard in the hospitality industry, but I definitely get the sense from a lot of our customers that um, that piece of the puzzle has been heightened over the last few years where um, you know, employees are, are learning skill sets they they never knew that they they may put to use. So, um, that's definitely uh, good feedback. 
Um, all right, awesome. Well, you know, sort of speaking of, um, you know, it, delivering experiences that hadn't um, really been on the docket before, um, let's talk a little bit about luxury experiences and how hotels can make changes or additions to, to implement more luxury into their offerings. And Lisa, I know you have um, something really cool to share. So we'll start with you. Oh, great. Absolutely. Um, so recently we um, added a, a MOC. And what that is, is an electric um, green friendly convertible car to get our, our guests all up and down Broadway. And, and what, what we found is by them touring Music City, they have just really enjoyed that. Um, so we're the only MOC um, offering in all of Tennessee. And we just had a, a, one of our top musicians that stays here often was in it yesterday and just enjoyed it so much. He took so many um, great photos that I'm going to be able to share on social media. So I'm really excited about that experience because we've only had it a, a few months, but the weather has not always been ideal. But yesterday it was in the 80s here in, Na in Nashville. So it was perfect. Um, so that's just been something very unique and different for our property to have something like that to offer. Sure, that's very cool. And how, Priya, are you seeing, you know, your customer base working to add sort of different experiences that they didn't typically have before? Absolutely. You know, I, I think, um, you know, Joel alluded to the fact uh, of the whole uh, uh, leisure or the blended travel piece, and we are seeing that across the board. And, uh, you know, Lisa just mentioned going green, and I think those have been kind of become really, really hot changes and topics that we're seeing in the industry where people are talking about sustainability of being more sustainable kind of uh, you know ensuring that the travel that we are seeing on the horizon develop for 2023 we are seeing budgets open up but you know uh, corporates kind of coming in and saying kind of making a conscious decision on whether travel is you know warranted travel is required and sustainability becomes key in that whole area but going into the whole luxury experience, I think from a you know from a technology provider standpoint, what we're seeing is uh, customers asking for and hotels asking for what more can the technology do for them, and some of the creative ways of being able to use customer data to pro to kind of provide a more a custom uh, experience because what we're seeing is that um, the, the travelers now want to create memories. Of course, we were all starved, deprived of travel uh, during the pandemic er you know, era, and we are trying to kind of make up for it now. So each of these um, travel destinations that we go to, we want to make memories out of those. So what does that mean? And what does it translate in into for a hotel to be able to deliver that? Um, it essentially means having uh, the right tools at your disposal, disposal to be able to capture data elements that kind of give you information on that traveler to know what you can deliver and how custom you can make that, whether it's packages, whether it's you know additional services that you provide at a fee. And all of that is what we're seeing as a growing trend amongst our hoteliers too, asking for those data elements, using and utilizing that to give a more custom experience for our um, you know, end guess. Knowing the customer's profile is is absolutely imperative um, to customize something to, you know, delight them and surprise them in a way that isn't, um, you know, on the stalking side. We don't want to pretend we know everything about their lives at the same time, but to give them a little nod about, you know, what their what their likes are and dislikes for that matter and make sure that they don't see any of that. We're doing the same thing here. You know, our DNA of our brand for One Hotels is sustainability. So everything from the ground up is based on that premise. Our mission is to, you know, do no harm, to um, do as much good as possible as we can for the planet. So we're not sacrificing the luxury services and amenities um, for the planet. Um, we have a fleet of electric bikes available for our guests. So that leisure person can, you know, take an e-bike out for the weekend. They can, you know, go on a picnic somewhere, drive down to the Golden Gate Bridge. We also have um, Audi as our official electric vehicle for the brand. So we have two vehicles on property. One, we provide service all around the city um, for uh, car service for guests to be dropped off at an office or, or a location or an, uh, an attraction. And then we also have another car available that they can actually reserve for a two-hour self-drive. 
Um, so that's nice for them to get around and see what they want to do in the city without sacrificing um, resources like gasoline, um, things like that. Um, yeah, and you know, we, we find that guests are really taking everything to heart that we provide here. Um, we do it. We do luxury in a very relaxed atmosphere, and I think that people walk in our door and feel like they've gone into an urban sanctuary. So as far as experiences go, the guests are able to enjoy the city more by being a little bit more relaxed and then having access to the bits of tra transportation that we do provide, but also the location to really take in all that um, is natural in our environment as well. It's, you know, in an urban environment, it's a little difficult, um, but gosh, even in Nashville, right, Lisa, people can mm -hmm. walk down Broadway and you end up at the river um, yeah. and nature is all around you. So it's nice to, to be able to bring that into the experience. Absolutely. That, those are some really great points. And, and just to kind of reiterate and tie a few things together, um, you know, Priya was talking about the role that technology plays in, um, in being able to deliver a luxury experience, right? And, and like you said, Joel, knowing their profile and what they like and, and almost as, you know, more important or as important what they don't like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is key. But one thing you said, Joel, was that doing that all in a way that they don't see, right? And so I think that that's um, part of luxury is, is providing seamless experience, right? It's it's providing experience that they can be relaxed and enjoy. Um, and But it's really cool to, to hear the, the ways, the similarities, um, but, but also sort of, I guess, the trend in, in the ways that both your properties are delivering luxury because we're not talking about spas and we're not talking about five-star dining. We are truly talking about, um, um, you know, crafted memorable experiences like like Priya said, people want to have um, a memorable and unique experience. So um, very awesome to see the way that your two properties are are stepping up to to deliver those. And um, you know, Priya, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, I sit on the same side of the table as you, but you know, that's that's the role that technology can play is is helping to provide that seamlessness. So the people that are on the you know front lines can deliver the the human element of it, and the software can can um, kind of back up all that data to to be able to deliver it in a seamless way, so that people can feel like they've been spoiled and had that that memorable experience. So. Um, really great conversation there, but that um, definitely segues into um, expectations, right? Attendee expectations, guest expectations. I think with these crafted, memorable, unique experiences come elevated expectations. And so, um, Joel, maybe you could um, speak to us a little bit about, you know, how you feel like attendee expectations have evolved and in what ways has your team learned to be flexible to meet those? Oh, certainly. Um, I think the evolution of the attend, you know, the attendee expectation is quite interesting over the last few years. Um, I think there's still a bit of a, a pandemic hangover for people, and and you know you can't judge anybody for their feeling. It's like if you don't want to be part of a larger group, then you shouldn't have to be. So that's why we're seeing, as Lisa mentioned at the top of at the top of the talk. Um, the hybrid situation for technology and meetings, um, I think the expectation is you should be able to join the meeting without actually having to be there. So a lot of our groups, I'd say well over 90% of our groups that have meetings in the hotel are incorporating um, technology to be able to bring people in via Zoom. Um, some get a little, you know, very, very high tech about it and want the uh, the owl mirrors that uh, the owl cameras that spin around and direct themselves at everybody around the table. Um, yeah, so it's imperative that you have a good technology partner or your own technology to be able to provide that. Um, we're fortunate we have one right across the street from us. That's our, our uh, AV partner, and they really have great access to, to great equipment. So um, being able to provide that isn't an issue. You know, there's still a cost to it, obviously. So I think from a planner perspective, that's in the budget these days. Um, it doesn't seem to be an issue. They just want the quote and move forward. So, um, you know, being able to bring people in that don't want to be there is one thing. The attendees on property and also part of being a, a group, it's been interesting, the trend we've seen of no-shows and cancellations within group reservations, um, especially from a corporate perspective. Typically, when you have a rooming list from a corporate group, that's your guarantee. And you typically see 100%, you know, anybody that's in the final rooming list shows up. That's not the case these days. Um, and I think there's a little bit of uh, the pandemic situation 
is still hanging over with that. Maybe some attendees feel they just don't want to come and then they make the decision last minute. Um, so not only does the planner uh, obviously have to be flexible, but we need to be flexible as well to meet those needs, make room changes, you know, uh, and again, I think the expectation from the planners these days is that they're just going to have to deal with this and they're going to have to pay for it regardless. And of course, we're working with them, you know, to make it as, as easy on them as possible and try to find other solutions to help, you know, direct their budgets and things like that. Um, I also think that on property, you um, you don't see a lot of requests anymore for um, anything to do with distancing. I think um, Lisa hit it on the head. It's like you just see smaller size groups that are going into larger spaces. Mm -hmm. um, we we personally here at our hotel in the, on the Embarcadero have very modest meeting space. So we specialize in smaller groups to begin with. And, um, you know, we like to actually give them more space because it makes sense for us. We don't take our ballroom and chop it in half and do two groups simultaneously. So if they're big enough for half the ballroom, they're based, they are in the ballroom. Um, it, it's, uh, it's modest sized. So um, we're seeing all of that happen um, as well as outdoor spaces. I think it's still prevalent out there that the planners are looking for the ability to have an indoor outdoor environment or an outdoor environment whenever possible, especially for like large receptions and gatherings. So we're very fortunate here to have a lot of outdoor space and we've really taken on the challenge of um, maximizing everything we can from every little terrace we have on top of our building to our outdoor terrace of our restaurant. So that becomes really popular and we, um, you know, we, we make it happen. Um, and it's a challenge in a sense that you want to deliver a high level luxury experience in an environment that may not have been designed for that. So, um, you know, the top uh, rooftop of a hotel doesn't exactly look as sexy as you think sometimes. <laughs> it's got <laughs> it's got railings, it's got equipment coming out of the top of the building. But um, you know, we've been able to design our service and our style of how we present food and beverage um, to really, you know, match the environment. We're trying to be um, as natural as possible. So, you know, nothing's overdone. We, you know, we we present food and beverage on linenless tables that are all solid wood and that kind of thing. Um, but we're fortunate to have stunning views. So when you're on a rooftop, you can design a wonderful little outdoor experience that really blends in with nature. And you typically don't notice the rest of the, you know, the vents and things coming out of the top of the building. Awesome. Yeah, I do. I definitely um, can see how the industry has made the most of whatever outdoor space they have. Um, and it, it's really fun to, to watch um, spaces evolve it from, you know, whatever it may have been into a really cool little courtyard or, you know, whatever it may be. We're definitely seeing a lot of customers um, adding space within um, Triple Seat to, you know, to, to add in these new little outdoor nooks or whatnot that they've um, incorporated. Um, Priya or, or Lisa, anything to add just on, on attendee expectation? Well, well, for us, I mean, Joel and I are on different ends of the United States. I mean, we're on different sides and we have very similar experiences and, you know, expectations from our same clients. It's, it's happening here, similar is there. So it's just unique to think about it that way. But what, what we, we strive for here is to get all of our staff to have a buy-in because we have, in this day, we have different different guests, different perspectives. You know, they have they come from different backgrounds. So if everybody's kind of on the same page of understanding that we're not going to think the same or be on the same page all the time, um, it just it has a better outcome of having the best satisfactory experience for all the guests or attendees. So that's that's kind of our our MO, if you will, to go on a day-to-day -day basis to making sure all of our staff understands that that, that could be a, a different perspective from a guest from day-to-day. -day. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Go um, ahead, Priya, yeah. You know, I, I, and I think from my perspective, again, you know, we speak to how we are seeing um, evolving, um, you know, technology needs for you know, delivering the kind of experience that Joel and Lisa are talking about. So what we're seeing is a, a, a lot more focus on mobility, a lot more focus on flexibility, a lot more kind of, you know, like you said, to recraft a space that was not traditionally an F&B outlet into an F&B or a meeting space to be able to kind of utilize that space more 
um, in, in a more commercially viable manner, right? So uh, the system therefore needs to be able to support that flexibility. Uh, we are seeing that, of course. What we're also seeing is mobility being on the rise to so to kind of using mobile technology um, and leveraging that. So to be able to post transactions while on the go, to be able to kind of, you know, uh, ensure that you have a QR code scan to kind of get the menu. So to have integrations that allow you to do that. So we are definitely seeing uh, a lot more utilization of technology to deliver exactly what um, you know Joel is talking about. So they're looking for partners, you know, uh, integrated platforms like ours to make that happen. Yes. Sure. You have yeah. to be able to do everything on an iPad. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, right. And and I think that it's that's um, I think that's becoming true of the people that work in our industry. But it is absolutely true of the people that support our industry. Right. They they come to your property. Um, with their phone in their hand and the ability to access so many things so quickly. And so I think um, there is definitely a very um, exciting play between delivering um, service, which is ultimately what our industry does from person to person and having that personal touch, but also being able to um, to meet customers sort of where, where they are now, which is um, very much with everything at their fingertips. And um, you know, Lisa or, or Joel, I mean, you definitely talked about some some very um, forward thinking things like the electric cars and whatnot. But um, do you find that um, attendee expectation or even planner expectation has evolved where they want the process to to have an element of technology to it and um, be able to, you know, sort of have some of those trans transactions automated and that planning automated to a certain degree, or at least accessible to them um, via technology. I'll let Lisa go for it. <laughs> um, it to a certain degree. Um, we're still considered a, a boutique property and our, our meeting space is somewhat small. So we don't have the elaborate setup from an audio visual perspective, but we can we can provide some of the, the higher end technology from Zoom or, or those kind of things. But um, what I found is um, through the pandemic, a lot of these senior advanced meeting planners sort of retired or was laid off. And so we're dealing with a lot of younger uh, admins or new meeting planners. So it takes us a little bit more time to get through the process than it did before because they're they're just newer to the process, uh, basically. And right. so we have to go a little hand by hand, step by step to make sure that they understand, we understand we're getting the delivering exactly what their expectation from their boss. <laughs> it's not necessarily what they need, but it's what their CEO or their their planner is coming, um, what they need when they get on property. Sure. Yeah, Lisa, sure. Lisa brings up a big trend. Um, that's true. The customer that we are working with is not the senior planner of, um, of the ages. We have very many new, we have a lot of Gen Z and millennial clients. <laughs> that technology is absolutely at the forefront. So, um, you know, our, our brand in general, we try to eliminate as much paper transaction as possible. Um, you know, no, no paper in the rooms even. We have nothing but QR codes for mini bar menus or in-room dining, et cetera. Um, we find that it's almost funny people ask us for um, electronic ways of doing business. So having the ability to e-sign contracts and all of that is that has to be a must now. If you don't have that capability, then you can't do business with, with a lot of these customers. Um, you know, we have an app on property too that handles most of our transactions, even for guests. That's how you order your in-room dining is through the app. That's how you reserve the car I mentioned earlier is through the app. We have a lot of um, happenings on properties all the time, whether it's a wellness product where we're doing a yoga event on one of our rooftops or we're having a sound bath um, experience whether we're um, doing a music experience as well we do you know things on our patio with djs all of that is accessible through the app to see what are the happenings some of them require sign up they can do that all through the app so from a meeting perspective 
I, I, you know, I've been a part of larger properties as well, where there's been apps for customers to be able to contact their, you know, their manager for the event, that type of thing. We're very small and petite, as Lisa mentioned as well, also very boutique uh, with small meeting space. So our, our position is from a luxury experience to always have accessibility to the human that's taking care of you and to be there all the time. So we handle those requests as they come up. But yeah, you, you know, we have to give cell phone numbers to guests to connect is a must. Um, you just can't do business without having your phone in your hand anymore. And we should be able to access all of our apps. So from the technology experience to have all of our applications that can integrate, whether it's with our PMS system or whether it's with our sales system, um, they need to integrate to various things. And so to be able to just pick up that phone and look something up for a customer or actually handle a front office transaction on the fly, um, whether it's from your iPad or your phone, that's second nature now. We have to we have to have that. Sure. Yeah, well, I think, um, Joel, you you kind of teed us up for the last conversation, which is um, about staffing challenges, right? So, you know, you 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 sort of gave that play between um, technology expectations and also not losing that that human element that is is integral, right, to to um, events and group travel. It, it it should be, and I'm sure it always will be. Um, but um, being able to to do it in a way that combines um, expectations as well as the human element. But um, I know that you know many properties have faced staffing challenges over the last several years and still um, still do today. So um, definitely something that we need to talk about. Um, Priya, if if you maybe want to start us out of you know how what are some creative ways that you think hotels can work around these staffing challenges? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think both uh, uh, Lisa and Joel already spoke to some of these points, but doing more with less is is almost the new mantra. It's 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 what every hotel out there is doing now. And one of the uh, ability to be able to do so is basically to have, you know, like Joel just mentioned, have an environment, uh, your technology that actually supports that, right? So to have a tech stack that allows you to have integrations that fulfill that end user experience, to have open APIs that talk to apps, where, which allow you to you know, make those bookings that are custom to your property. Uh, so some of that is definitely an, a larger you know, uh, a corporate or even a hotel's uh, strategic investment into technology that enables that. Um, what what we are also seeing and what uh, is happening in the market is that more and more hotels are gearing towards uh, you know systems that are, have artificial intelligence inbuilt in them, which means that they do a lot of these repetitive tasks automatically, right? So just to give a few examples, um, you can uh, import the rooming list. You can break up and split up the rooms into reservations, the rooming list into reservations. You can update simultaneously, you know, different information on different participants of that group, automatically have rooms assigned. Nobody needs to do it manual, just say auto room assignment, it automatically assigns the rooms. Auto check-in, it automatically check -ins, so checks in at the arrival time that you determine. So those kind of things immediately remove the requirement of having a person looking through that list assigning a room, checking in the guest, which all of that is, you know, you know, time consuming for sure, but also is a huge resource drain. So now when you have a platform that allows you to do most of this automatically, you can now take away staff members from there and actually have them redirected to providing the experience that you want them to have. You know, Joel uh, spoke about having a high touch environment because this is a luxury hotel. How do you make it high touch with less staff then? You do that when you have a system that supports it. Yeah, great points. At Lisa and Joel, you know, do you do you have any sort of staffing challenges that you've both faced over the years, and and any uh, ways that you sort of creatively overcame those challenges? I would say. Um... In the current environment that I work in, where uh, San Francisco is a very much a union city, so most of our hotels are union. Um, that's actually quite a quite a blessing. I've been in a a situation in a non-union hotel reopening after the pandemic and not being able to get staff. Um, very, very difficult to get staff, especially in the food and beverage area. San Francisco really had um, 
took a big hit during the pandemic era in the food and beverage um, world. A lot of closings of restaurants, even some that were longstanding restaurants here in the city. So kind of a blow to that part of the industry. It's coming back very nicely, which is great. But, um, you know, getting the staffing still is, is quite a challenge. You will find still to this day, walking into some establishments and their schedules, uh, you know, their, their opening hours change daily, um, or they just close because nobody came in. Um, so it's it's still a challenge. But for our hotel, um, you know, being in, in the union environment, we were very fortunate to get all of our employees to return, essentially, when we reopened the hotel. Um, you know, everybody comes back to their their seniority and their, their status, which is fantastic. So um, we've also obviously had the challenges of still hiring new people. But one of the things that we did was to work with our, our union management to retool some of our food and beverage areas that make it a little bit easier to staff as well as provide the service that we want for the guests. So in a, you know, in a city environment, morning and lunchtime are not the biggest opportunities for a hotel. Um, it's usually going to be your dinner um, and evening activities and things like that, and especially when you have the kind of restaurant that we do which is um, you know, very activated. We do um, uh, sunset sessions a few days a week out on our patio with DJs and things like that. We have a huge happy hour crowd. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to be around a lot of tech companies. So um, tech didn't, well, tech's not having the greatest first quarter, but <laughs> tech during last year um, was still doing quite, quite well. So a lot of business into restaurants and things like that. Um, we worked with our union to redesign the service model. So instead of being a full service restaurant, three meals a day, we do a cafe style service for breakfast and lunch. So people order at the counter and then it's served to them at the table. And that really does cut down on the amount of food and beverage labor, but then looking for ways of utilizing the people that are working during the day to still add additional luxury services. So you will find that in an environment like San Francisco, especially in that, um, keep saying the word I don't like, leisure, um, you know, you're, you're at work, but at the same time, you can stay an extra day. And instead of working with your laptop in, in your room, you're sitting in an outside environment looking at the bay and you're having a drink. So we don't have bartenders during the day. How did we work that out? There is the ability to still serve certain cocktails in a certain way with the staff that we do have. So we've added a really fun spritz menu, for example, um, that's available all day long, as well as mimosas. So you will always see people um, that look like they're still here on business, but they're having a mimosa with their breakfast. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, um, it's in the way you approach it creatively to make sure that you're offering options. And I, somebody always told me, especially when I started working in the luxury environment, luxury is about options. So, you know, you can never say no. Um, it's, it's a yes, but how about this? <laughs> <laughs> so um, creating those, those options for people is, is what makes things luxurious because you have a wealth of things to choose from and, uh, you know, it's your choice, your world and make it your way. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I love that luxurious mm -hmm. options, but um, yeah, the more, the more options that you have that you can execute on successfully, um, then the, the, the more opportunity you have, right? So I love that. No, uh, I, I was going to add to uh, what Joel said. I definitely see mimosa as a, a huge trend in all restaurants. And now that explains the whole, uh, how we are tackling, um, you know, staffing shortages and offering options too, because of that. Um, but, you know, talking about uh, just hiring, right? That of course has been um, a challenge uh, to kind of find staff to be able to hire for your, um, you know, uh, for your hotel, for your restaurant, but also the retention element, right? The, we are not seeing the whole, um, you know, staying with us for years unless you're blessed with a union property like like Joel is. Um, and which brings to um, uh, home the point of training, right? Because if you now have to keep training and retraining staff, you know how long it takes before they actually catch on to what you need them to do. And before they're trained, they've left. So one of the other requirements that we're seeing from our, uh, you know, hotel users is uh, platforms that are intuitive and easy to use, like wherein you can have somebody that just comes in and is able to understand by looking at the system. Of course, you know, uh, we've already mentioned that with more and more uh, people becoming so conversant with technology in their day-to-day -day lives, all of us use phones, all of, you, all of us use fa um, apps, 
all of us almost have this instant gratification you click and it works uh, so those kind of elements have also redrafted how technology is presented in our uh, hospitality industry so now we're uh, looking at platforms that are easy to use easy to learn it doesn't matter you don't have to have years of experience to be able to come and uh, operate that you just read english you know operate the system and it works for you so those are some of the elements that we're seeing uh, you know uh, coming in as well Sure. Thank you. And and you made a good point there about, um, you know, retention and how important it is. And, and that made me think of what Lisa said about um, that they, you know, they ask for a full, full buy-in from um, staff, which, which I love, right? It's like, you're, you're making them part of what you're doing every day. You're giving importance to it, making sure they understand the importance of it um, so that they are really a key element in delivering those experiences that we keep talking about. So um, that is definitely key any and in any industry, for, but certainly in the hotel industry for sure. Um, well, before we wrap up, any last thoughts or or um, you know comments that any of you want to make? I mean, I think we had a great conversation today. I really appreciate all your insights into this topic and um, love you know hearing, like you said, Lisa, what's happening on two opposite sides of of the country, you know, that wasn't intentional, but pretty cool that, that it happened to be that way. And, and also seeing, um, you know, exactly what you had in common. I thought you both made some really good points about, you know, even who the planners are these days and how that's evolved and, and that you're both seeing that. So, and of course, I know you're here sick of saying it and hearing it, Joel, but definitely seems like leisure is, um, is here to stay for a while, which is, which is um, great. So, you know, I think any way that um, hotels can attract those extended stays or those pre-stays, um, obviously it, it benefits everybody and especially the traveler, right? So sounds like mimosas on a day after a conference sounds absolutely wonderful to me. So I uh, I have no, no objections to that whatsoever. But um, I just want to thank the three of you again for, for joining us and thank you all um, that are listening for joining us. If you found that the webinar today was of value, please do share the recording. Uh, recordings of past webinars can be found on the International Luxury Hotel Association's website, theilha.com, under the events section. So thank you all so much. <laughs>